Please welcome to the class. Yes, sir. So what's your doubt? Sir, I don't have any doubt, but I, uh, I, when I, should I practice tomorrow? If I have any doubt, I'll post it on the group. Okay, sure. Uh, so you can always ask your doubt to the science support and feedback group. So the derivation, the teacher told me that derivation won't come, like explaining the laws of motion. Okay, no issue. There are, see, it's a common thing. Some of the institutes, they give the derivation also. Some of the institutes, they don't give a derivation. They give directly application. Yes, okay. So we uh, only had a doubt on... Uh, Sir, I have to use the kinetic motions carefully, right? Like based on yeah. the question. Yeah. Yes, sir. So second law of motion. We are here on the second law of motion. The second law of motion, it states that. State that. The net force. Acting on an object, acting on a body, is directly proportional is directly proportional to the rate of change of moment. Rate of change of momentum. Okay. Now so we had we had obtained of the mark. So we had obtained an expression. We had seen we had written this in the form of in a in a mathematical form. We had written this, and I had told you that force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. So we had obtained a formula also. So how do we write it? Mathematically, we write the expression. So mathematically, we write the expression something like this. So we say force is Directly proportional. So directly proportional, we write something like this. The force is the net force F acting on a body is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. So rate of change of momentum with respect to time. So we observe what is the change of momentum with respect to time. Time. So we can obtain, we can write it as F proportional to change of momentum, which we write delta P by delta T, where delta P is the change in momentum and delta T represents the change of time. So if the change of time be equal to T, we can write F proportional to delta p change of momentum over time now delta p can be written as final momentum i can write it as final momentum minus initial momentum where the symbols pf and pi represent final and initial momentum so pf represents final momentum pi represents initial momentum and t represents time so pf will be the final momentum pi will be the initial momentum. So PF or the final momentum can be written as MV minus the initial momentum can be written as MU divided by time. Now here we can see mass is constant in both of them. So we take out mass common and we obtain here mass multiplied with V minus U over T. See, here we are considering that the mass is conserved during any motion we consider here that the mass is conserved. If we have mass also a variable quantity, so we have different uh, different arrangements to find out that. 
So currently we are assumed that the mass remains constant. We haven't seen that during the motion the mass of an object changes. Okay. We observe if a car has a mass of uh, 1500 kilograms, so it will have a mass of 1500 kilograms irrespective of whatever speed it travels. Okay. So considering that we have mass constant, we take out m common from both of them and we get here v minus u over t. So V minus U over T is equal to acceleration. If you remember the formula for acceleration, we have seen acceleration as V minus U over T. Got it? So acceleration we obtain as V minus U by T. And substituting V minus U by T with A, I can write M A. So here I can write force to be equal to mass times acceleration. Okay. Force equals to mass times acceleration. Got it? So this is a very important relationship. You have to remember force equals to mass times acceleration or if you want to find out acceleration, so the same formula can be used as acceleration will be equal to force over mass. Just by rearranging the terms, I can obtain the amount of acceleration that will be there. Okay. So like everyone, to note down this formula, all of you note down this formula and then we will do a few questions based on that. Okay. So I am writing here questions. Till then you note down the formula. Make use of this formula. This formula we obtained from the Newton's second law of motion. Sir, can you help me the previous slide? This is the only formula for second law of motion, right? Yeah. Okay, sir. The previous thing. Sir, uh, thank you, sir. Sir, done, sir. And also, uh, in the above one, force is equals to delta P by P is equals to P, uh, momentum F. What is that in exchange of one second? Yeah, delta P over delta T, it represents the change of momentum over change of time. So, delta P by delta T, yes. Sir, below that, uh, you wrote that P F by minus P I by T. That one. Okay, so this P F minus P I, it represents final momentum minus initial momentum. So P F here is representing final momentum. Okay. This is final momentum. And P I represents initial momentum. Okay. So, final momentum is obtained by the formula mv and initial momentum is obtained by the formula mu. We have done this earlier. The only thing we divided by time. So, shall I start with the questions? Yes, sir. So... So we have find the force required to accelerate a mass of twenty two kilogram by one point one meter per second square okay so you are given the mass here you are given the acceleration you are only supposed to find out the force so can you find out the force here yes sir yeah Use the formula force equals to mass times acceleration. So we obtain here F equals to MA. Here we are supposed to find out force. Mass is given as 22 kilogram. And acceleration is given as 1.1 meter per second. 
So just putting the values here, so we have 22 multiplied. Sir, 24.2 Newton. Uh, I think I need to use. So if you multiply 22 with 1.1, what's the answer you are getting? Sir, 24.2. 24.2. Okay. So we get here 24.2 Newton. So Newton is the SI unit of force. The SI unit of force is Newton. So here it says that if a body of mass 2.22 kilogram is accelerating with an acceleration of 1.1 meter per second square, so there will be a force of 24.2. A force of 24.2 Newton is required. Okay. So let's see here uh, another example. Try to uh, solve this example now. A force of 100 Newton is required to push a lawn roller of mass 24 kilogram. Find the acceleration. Required by the lawn roller. Okay. So just use the direct formula and find out the acceleration. What will be the acceleration here? Okay. Anyone got the answer? You should be very quick in solving the answers. I think you should. I, I thought you must have got the answer. Sir, 4.16. Yes, 4.16 or you can say 4.17. By rounding off, you can say the answer is 4.17. Okay. So your answer here is 4.17. Very good. Everyone has understood this question? Yes, sir. Okay. So we have here force. Uh, we need to find acceleration. So acceleration will be given by force by mass. And okay? force is 100 Newton divided by 24, which is equal to 4.17 meter per second square. Don't forget. To put the units. Okay, let's say another question. So currently we are doing just simple ones. Then after this, I'll be giving you a little bit of questions from this term. So start with this question now. A ball attains an acceleration of 9.8 meter per second square. A ball attains an acceleration of 9.8 meter per second square. If it has a mass of, or uh, if a force of 98 Newton act on it, find the mass of ball. So can you find it out? 
एक्सिलेशन हेयर इज नाइन पॉइंट एट meter per second square and now we have to find out the mass so just use the formula f equal to m a put the values here 98 newton equals m times acceleration which is 9.8 so by transposing we get mass equals 98 over 9.8 that is equal to 10 kg so anyone finding any difficulty or any problem in these questions Yes. Anyone finding any problems in these questions? now let's see some of the questions which are based from ncert so we'll see some questions which are based from ncert So if you have your NCERT, you can open up. Otherwise, I'm showing you. Yes, sir. Yeah. so here we have a question see a constant force on an object of mass 5 kg so this question may look a little bit complicated but again uh, go through the basics whatever we have studied now also the chapter 1 and chapter 2 all the parts of chapter 1 and chapter chapter 1 you will find including in this chapter 2 everything whatever you have studied in chapter 1 that is velocity acceleration equations of motion all of them they will be applicable in chapter 2 also and whatever you study here in chapter 2 will be applicable in chapter 3 also so all the thing in in physics we are going just building up of building up the concept and adding on reaching more uh, more and more knowledge so at every step you are adding the concepts you don't need to you don't have to forget whatever you have studied in chapter 1 so see a constant force act on an object of mass 5 kg for a duration of 2 second it increases the object's velocity from 3 m per second to 7 m per second find the magnitude of the applied force so as we know The Sir, amount of force is formula delta P by T here, right? Yeah, you can use either delta P by T, or you can find out the acceleration separately. 
Okay. You can also find out the acceleration. So, so you have f equal, equal you can find f equal to ma you can use this so you have to find out force you know mass so what all is given here you are given mass as 5 kilogram you are given initial velocity 3 meter per second final velocity v as 7 meter per second and time as 2 seconds so either you can use the formula f equals to delta p by delta t or you try to find out first the acceleration. If you know the acceleration, you can find out force. Okay. So what will be the acceleration here? So 2 meter per second. 2 meter per second square. Yes. So then we can do uh, force is equal to ma. Yes. So you which will, will have make this it uh, 5 by 4, which will be 1.5. Uh, 1.6. No. Force will be mass times acceleration. So mass is given as 5. Acceleration we have found 2. So what should be the force? So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 Newton. Okay. So force here will be 10 Newton. SI unit well, of force. Even by, uh, by doing delta P by T, we will get the same answer, right? Yeah, you, even if you find delta P by delta T, you'll get the same. So if I find out the final momentum, initial momentum, divide it by, divide change of momentum by time, you'll get the same. Okay. So this part we have done. Find the magnitude of the applied force. This we have done. Now the next part. Now if the force was applied for a duration of 5 seconds, what would be the final velocity of the object? So this question now can be solved with the help of the first chapter. So you need here the help of chapter one. Okay. So if the force was applied for a duration of five seconds, what would be the final velocity of the object? So, uh, which formula is to be used now? Okay. Uh, first of all, all of you turn on your camera so that I can see who all are present here. Okay. Sampar, are you yes, sleeping? Sir. No, sir. Okay. So, okay. what is the initial velocity given here? Sir, 3 meter per second. Okay. And what about the final velocity? Sir, by, uh, 7 meter per second. Sir, in no. this case, the first equation of motion v is first cubic incident. Yeah, Sampath, what happened? Sir, for uh, uh, finding the final velocity, we will use first equation of motion v is first cubic incident. Yes, you will use the first equation of motion. See, initial velocity is given here. The initial velocity u is given as 3 meter per second. You are given the acceleration as we have found out as 2 meter per second square. We know the time. See, finally it says if the force was applied for a duration of 5 seconds. So if the force was applied for 5 seconds, so how long will be the acceleration? How long will the acceleration last? So, 2 meter per second square. How long? How long will the acceleration last? Five seconds. Yeah, five seconds. Yes, sir. So you are applying the force for five seconds. There will be acceleration also for five seconds. So time here is five seconds. And now we want to find out the final velocity. Sir, final velocity, it will be 13 meters per second. So you will use your first equation of motion. 
Use your first equation of motion and find the final velocity. Jitendra, Mohammad Riyan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, have you found the answer? I'm still doing, sir. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, how much? 30 meter per second. We have V equals U plus 80. So 13, 1, 3. U is given as 3 plus acceleration is 2 multiply with time, which is 5. This, this you get 3 plus 10, which is 13 meter per second. Got it? Anyone having any doubt? Anyone having any doubt? No, sir. Okay. So I'm adding one more question in this in the same question. Okay. I'm adding something more you have to find out. So here I want to find out. You have to uh, find the distance traveled during this time. So you have to find here during two seconds or five seconds. Five seconds, okay. Find the distance traveled during five seconds. Okay. So if you do not get, if you don't understand, just uh, ask how you will find sir. the distance traveled during five seconds. Sir, utilizing second equation of motion. Yeah, you can use either second equation of motion or you can utilize third equation of motion also. You yes, can sir. either use second or the third equation of motion to obtain it. Sir, the answer will be 40 meters. Okay. So, let's... Uh, anyone else will found out? 30. Rohit, have you got? 30. Okay, Rohit is getting 30. And uh, who is getting 40? Sir, Sampath. Sampath is getting 40. Harshit, what about your answer? Yes, sir, 40, 40, sir. 40, I calculated wrong. Okay. Harshit, what about your answer? Harshit and Mohamed Riyan. So, one, so. So, Mohamed Riyan, you will be using here the second equation of motion or third equation of motion. Okay. Either one we can use. We use your S equal UT plus 1 by 2 AT square. So this is equal to the initial velocity is given as 3 multiply with time that is 5 plus 1 by 2 multiply acceleration which is 2 and multiply with 5 square. So we have 15 plus 25 which is 40 meter. So the displacement or the distance traveled during this time is 40 meter. Now let's see the next question. In the next question, I won't be helping you out. You need to do it all on your own. Okay. This question I did. I also helped you. The next question you will be doing on your own. Yes, indeed. Okay, so you have this question. Which would require a greater force accelerating a 2 kilogram mass at 5 meter per second square or a 4 kilogram mass at 2 meter per second? So 2 kg mass. No. So find out the force in both the cases. Sir, 2 kg mass at 5 meter. 
Ya. Saya pikir sih masih semua. Ya. If you are accelerating at 2 kg mass at an acceleration of 5 meter per second square, so the amount of force that you require is 10. Say, so, but for the second one, the amount of force which is given is 8. Yeah. So for the first one, F1, we are getting as mass which is 2 multiplied with 5, that is 10 Newton. For the second one, F2, we are getting mass multiply acceleration which is 4 multiplied 2 that is just 8 new. Okay. So which one would require a greater force? Sir, I can write in the Sir, uh, 2 kg mass at 5 meter per second. Okay. So here 2 kilogram mass accelerating with 5 meter per second square would require a greater force. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Now see this one. This was a quite easy question. Now see. A motor car is moving with a velocity of 108 km per hour. And it takes 4 seconds to stop after the brakes are applied. So from this question, first of all, you note down what all information is given here. You note down all the information that is given here. Do we need to find acceleration for this thing? Yeah, first you have to find out the acceleration here. And once you get the acceleration, then you will be able to find out the force. So what all information is given here? So the initial velocity time. Yeah, time is given here as 4 seconds. Yes, sir. Sir, and we also have the mass. Which one? Sir, we have mass, which is 1000 kg. Time, 4 seconds. And velocity. Which velocity is this? Sir, final. Initial velocity. This is the initial velocity. Read the question again. A motor car is moving sir, with the velocity. Sir, then the final velocity be zero? Yeah, then the final velocity will be zero. Sir, uh, we have to send the answer in the chat. Okay. Let me check out. Those who have done can send their answers in chat directly. So you have initial velocity as 108 kilometer per hour. This should be converted to meter per second. This should be, I think, 30 meter per second. Final velocity equal to zero. The time taken would be equal to four seconds. And you find the acceleration. So the answer is uh, 7500. Yeah, the answer is so 0 minus 30 by uh, 4, which will be 7.5. Negative 7.5. Okay, negative 15 over 2. That's negative 7.5. So, so 1000 into negative uh, 7.5 will be negative 7500. Yeah, so force would be equal to mass times acceleration. Which that is 7500. Be, negative 7500. It would be 1000 multiplied with 
negative 7.5, that's 7,500 Newton, a negative. Yes, sir. Okay. So I think now you are getting the concept. Anyone who is uh, facing any difficulty? No, sir. No, no difficulty. This is uh, 7,500 force is, uh, uh, um, represents the friction force. No, sir. Uh, yeah, what happened? Sir, it, this represents the force uh, applied by the brakes or uh, uh, brakes, no, sir, the negative one. Yeah, this force is a retarding force. The brakes yeah. apply the retarding force. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, bye.